So what is in Choose K? It's not just the name of this channel, it means so much more. Let's talk about that. Hello everyone, thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe so you not miss my next video. So today we're going to go over something that is very fundamental for this grid map. We call it n choose k So n choose k is a nickname for binomial coefficient NK, which is something that defined combinatorially, which means that it counts the number of ways to do something. So in this case, n choose k counts the number of ways you can pick k objects from the set of n objects. Hence the name n choose k, right? Because you have n objects and then you choose k of them. Let's do one quick example so we see what's going on here. So let's say you have seven shirts in your closet and then you want to pick three of them to put in your bag so you can go on a weekend trip. So for simplicity, let's call those shirt, shirt one, shirt two, shirt three, all the way to shirt seven. And what are some ways to pick three shirts? Well, you can do one, two, three. All right, and one important thing about um, in choose K thingy is we don't care about the order. So once you have one, two, three, you don't consider 1, 3, 2 as different configuration because you just put 3 shirts in your bag, right? It doesn't matter which one you put in first. You're going to pack all of them there anyway. So 1, 2, 3 will be considered the same as 1, 3, 2. So if you want to list all possible way out, you don't list 1, 3, 2 as another combination. So we have 1, 2, 3 here. What's are some other way? Well, we can do 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 6, so on and so forth. So in this case, let, let me actually list everything out for you. Alright, here they are. I think I have them all. So if you just come up with three random numbers between 1 to 7, you should find your sequence there. Like if you have 1, 2, 4, and 7, 2, 4, and 7 is right here. Right? And um, if you come up with any random number, it should be one of these combinations. So 7 choose 3 is the number of configuration we have on this board. So let's count how many are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 15, 16, 17, 33, 34, 35. So 7 choose 3 is 35. Alright, notation wise, we're gonna write 7 choose 3 as something like this. 7 choose 3 is 35 because there are 35 ways to pick 3 numbers out of 7 numbers. Alright, and if you're adventurous, you can try to compute a choose 3, a choose 4, 10 choose 5 by yourself. It's going to be very tedious to compute those numbers if you want to do it the way that I did. And that's why we have formula. In order to know how many ways to do those configurations, instead of listing them all out, you can just use the following formula to compute n choose k. But before I go over formula for n choose k, I need to introduce another formula really quickly first, which is formula for factorial. Alright, so n factorial, which is denoted by n with exclamation point, is another combinatorial number, which means this number counts the number of ways to do something. And in this case, n factorial counts the number of ways to rearrange n number in the line. Alright, and formula for n factorial is n factorial is the same as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to 2 to 1. As an example, if you want to compute 4 factorial, 4 factorial is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives you 24. So with that, there should be 24 ways to rearrange number from 1 to 4, and here they are. Alright, so these are all the ways to rearrange four numbers. So if you have number 1, 2, 3, 4, and you want to line them up in the line, maybe you want 3 first, and then you want 2, and then you want 4, you want 1, you end up with 3, 2, 4, 1. That configuration should appear on this board. So 3, 2, 4, 1 is right here. And anyway, you want to rearrange, it should appear on as one of these configurations, and there are 24 of them. Alright, with this, we are ready to dig into the formula for n choose k. Alright, so formula of n choose k is as follows. You have n factorial on top, you have k factorial on the bottom, and also n minus k factorial on the bottom. Alright, so let's actually do one example. 
before we compute 7 choose 3, right? By just list everything out and we get 35. So hopefully if we pass n equal to 7, k equal to 3, use this formula, the result should be 35. Let's do that. So what is 7 choose 3? 7 choose 3 is just 7 factorial on top, 3 factorial on the bottom. And the way I memorize this is the other factorial should add to this, become the top number. So we have 7 here, we have 3 here, so we have 4 left. So it's 4 factorial here. Every time you compute n choose k, please don't multiply everything out and divide at the end because you want to do cancellation first. So let's expand 7 factorial out as 7 times 6 all the way to 1. 3 factorial going to be 3 to 1, 4 factorial going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Alright, and don't multiply out just yet. Try to do a lot of cancellation first and then multiply at the end. In this case, you see 4, 3, 2, 1 here and also 4, 3, 2, 1 here. So you can do cancellation like this. And then you have 3 times 2 here and 6 here. So 3, 2, and 6. And at the end, all the bottom numbers are gone. At the top, you have 7 and 5. So the answer is 7 times 5, which is 35. So of course, in choose case, helpful when you want to count the number of ways to pick some number of objects from the bigger set of objects. But sometimes the problem is not phrased that way. But you can still use in choose case to attack that problem. And, and these are a few problems that you can use in choose case. So let's go to those examples. So let's count the number of ways to rearrange these seven letters. So we have four of the A's and three of the B's. At plans, you might be like, oh, we have seen this before. You rearrange seven letters, the answer is seven factorial. Except no. In that case, those seven numbers are totally different. This one, four A's are the same, and these three B's are the same. So if we switch up these two A's, you end up with the same configuration because there's no way to distinguish the first two A's. And at first, this might not be a problem that you would think that you would use and choose care to attack this problem, but you can totally do that. And here's how. Let's view this problem as follows. So instead of looking at this number, we look at seven empty spots. Well, why seven? Well, we have seven letters, so we can start with seven empty spots. And among these seven, we're going to choose three of them to place B. Alright, so let's say that we pick this guy, this guy, and this guy. So we end up with B, B, three more empty spots, and B here. Alright, and once we have this configuration, A will just need to go to the rest of the empty spots. Alright, so we kind of like redefine the problem a little bit. So instead of start with these seven letters and we rearrange them, instead we start with seven empty spots and we place three Bs in there. And you can imagine that these two operations is kind of like yield to the same result. So instead of asking the number of ways to do this, we're going to look at the number of ways to do this. But it is precisely this guy, right? We just choose three spots. So the number of ways to choose three spots out of seven spots is just seven choose three. And as we computed twice already, seven choose three is 35. So there are 35 ways to rearrange this seven letter in some way. Alright, so let's look at the second example. So let's count the number of ways to walk from this point all the way to this point. This point is 0, 0. This point is 4, 3. And you need to walk on the grid. And you're only allowed to walk up and right. So, I mean, walk left and down would be just a waste of time, right? So, for example, one way to do is you can go up twice. And then you can go right, right, right. And then you go up and then right and then you, you reach the destination. Or if you are a type of person that can only do one thing at a time, then you can go all the way right first and then go up at the end. Or if you are in this type of person, you can go right first and then you go up and then go right and then go up and then go right and then go up and then go right at the end. Alright, so I just show you the three ways you can go from 0, 0 to 4, 3. The question is, what is the number of possible ways to do this? And again, this might not seem like a problem that you can use and choose k to attack this problem, right? How do we choose a number of things from a number of things here? You actually can if you try to look at this problem from different perspective. Alright, so let's look at this part as an, an example. One key observation that you can make is that no matter how you walk from 0, 0 to 4, 3, the part will consist of 4 right and 3 ups. Right, because the destination is four step to the right of the original and three step north of the original point. So no matter what you do, you need to 
do four right at some point and you need to do three up at some point. We can kind of transcribe that into kind of like a sequence of move that we make. So for example, this one, we do two right bow. So we're going to denote right by R. So we do two right and then we do one up, which we're going to denote by U. Then we do two right in a row and then we do two up in a row. So you can kind of see that you can go back and forth between this, right? If somebody gives you a path from 0, 0 to 4, 3, you can translate to this configuration. On the other hand, if somebody gives you this configuration, you can translate back to this guy too. Just go to right, one up, to right, two up, and then you recover this path. So instead of counting the number of ways to do this, we can count the number of ways to do this instead. But what is this? This is simply rearrangement of three U's and four R's. Alright, so what's the conclusion? The conclusion is the number of ways to walk from 0, 0 to 4, 3 is the same as the number of ways to rearrange 4R and 3U in the line, which we know from example 1 that this is simply 7 choose 3, right? Because there are 7 letters, there are 3 U, so... So the number of ways is simply 7 choose 3, which again is 35. So I want to finish this video with something that directly related to n choose k, which is the famous Pascal triangle. So here's how it works. You start with one in the first row, and the next row will be a pair of one, and you kind of place them so that it's kind of like form an equilateral triangle. So we have one, one like this, and the next row is going to be three numbers, and the way we place them, we're going to place them so that you have kind of like a triangle, therefore we call it a Pascal triangle. To determine those number, we start with 1 as the leftmost number. Next number is going to be the sum of the number that diagonally above it. So this guy is going to be this guy plus this guy, right? So 1 plus 1 is going to be 2 here. And then last guy is going to finish with a 1 again. Alright, let's compute the next row together. So it's going to be 1 here because we always start off with the 1. This guy is going to be sum of these two. So 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. This guy is going to also be 3 and this guy is going to be 1. This guy is going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And as I mentioned, this is directly related to binomial coefficient, which is n choose k that we talk about. So what is the relationship? So we can try to count the row from the top. So we're going to call this 0 row. We're going to call this the first row. Second, third, fourth. Okay, so with this, how does n choose k show up? Well, as a matter of fact, all of these numbers will be n choose k for some n and k, right? How do we determine those n and k? So the row number is going to be n. So for example, this is the fourth row, right? So all of these will be 4 choose something. The fourth row will be 4 choose something, and those something will be just 0, 1, 2, all the way to 4 from left to right. So the left model is 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, and 4 choose 4. And we can go back to the third row. This guy can be 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, and 3 choose 3, except for example. So why do we care about Pascal triangle? Well, it's true that if you want to compute just 1 and choose k, maybe just like 7 choose 3, you don't compute Pascal triangle because it's going to be a waste of time. You use the formula that I introduced, the 7 factorial over 3 factorial, 4 factorial. But Pascal triangle is actually pretty useful if you want to compute everything in a row. For example, if you want to know 4 choose something for every something, if you want to know 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, all the way to 4 choose 4. If you use that formula like 5 times, it's going to be a lot of work, but if you compute Pascal triangle, you get 4 choose k for all k all at once. So it's pretty handy when you want to compute a lot of n choose k. Alright, so that's all I want to talk about today. If you have more questions that you want me to answer, please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please leave a big like too. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so I'll be your best friend. And for today, thank you for watching. My name is Kuang and you're watching n choose k. Peace!